everyone, and thank you for attending today's Play Attention special webinar, and we will be discussing nutrition and ADHD. I am pleased to present to you our guest host, Tristy Vanderspy. She is a senior dietitian with over 20 years experience, and I truly do appreciate you taking out the time today to listen to her presentation. A couple of things I want to mention, we are recording this event. So at the end of the webinar, you're going to receive an email, which will have a link to the recording, which you can share with other staff members or other family members who were able to attend the live event. Also, if at any time you do have questions, please type your questions in the Q&A box found at the bottom left-hand corner of the screen. Now we do have a large audience today, so Tristy may be uh, answering your questions as she proceeds through. However, she may also wait on some of your questions and do a Q&A time at the end of the webinar. So don't worry if your questions are answered right away, we will address them at the end of the webinar. If you do lose connection at any time, don't worry. As soon as your internet resumes, you'll be able to log in and uh, pick up where you left off. Again, thank you everyone for being here and type in your questions as we move along. And I will now present you and turn you over to Tristy Vanderspot. Bye. Thank you, Gwen. It is a wonderful privilege for me as a South African to have this webinar with a lot of your colleagues and also friends and members um, in America. And I believe there is also a lot of South Africans that's also attending today. The webinar actually has been asked to talk about nutrition and the wonderful work that I as a dietitian are doing. And just to remind each and every one that we as dietitians are also human beings and we are also naughty sometimes. And that is why we can learn our colleagues or from our colleagues but also for each and every one of you, how to take the knowledge of today and implement it in your household. For mums, um, I just want to thank each and every one of you um, connecting with us, sharing the information. Um, this is coming from my heart. Dietitian is my passion, and it's wonderful to share this knowledge with each and every one. Um, <clears throat> firstly, it is for me a wonderful start to say that it is a chronic condition and I think a lot of times um, people think it's something that can stop some other time. One of the articles that I've read now in the past three days with new information tells us that there is about a third of or almost 11% of the young ones in America between the age of four and 11 years of age that are struggling with ADHD. A third of these children can outgrow the ADHD. So that is wonderful news so that we don't need to stay with the chronic condition. The stats also show that 4% of the adults in America have adult ADHD. And sometimes I think um, it's maybe better for the adults to continue with the ADHD because they can learn with coping mechanisms. I think the most important thing is the combination of persistent problems where we struggle with the little ones with continuing focus. Um, they've got no attention to details. Um, they are easily distracted. And I think it takes quite some time from a parent to teach their children to continually listen to what requests and orders is being given because they don't focus and they don't um, do the exact thing that's been asked from them because they can't remember. So keep that in mind for your little ones because they are so precious and not 
remembering can make us furious. But remember that with the ADHD, it's really a concern um, with the little ones. They get bored easily. So it's as if their concentration span is not that good. They struggle to continue um, and complete tasks that's been given to them. And they've got difficulty in remembering things. I went to a colleague and she asked her ADHD child um, over the weekend to fetch her, her ring. And it was so precious that when he came at the door, he forgot what mommy asked. And um, that is something to laugh at, but it's also a serious matter for being with a child in your house that can't remember if you have given him a specific task. Difficulty in following instructions is also a problem. And then hyperactivity and impulsive behavior and also careless mistakes. I just want to pop in with the second last one of hyperactivity. And I think this is where a lot of us will think that um, the nutrition and the right diet will actually prevent ADHD, but it can never. Um, the ADHD is a disease, it's been made, but if we can make the right decisions on the food, then it is important that you can actually help your child to have the hyperactivity um, not as much. If we have a look at adults, I think the three major categories is inattention, hyperactivity, and also impulsivity. The main important thing that I want to stress at this moment is how it can affect you as an adult in a company. Because in the corporate world, if you have not an attention span, it is very difficult to follow orders. Um, to complete tasks and also to benefit um, to the com company or be rewarded at all. Hyperactivity can be a problem even if we have a meeting and somebody in the group is ticking or scratching or fidgeting all the time. It can be some sort of a disturbance. Um, impulsivity is also a problem, especially when we are in the corporate world and making decisions and you have done something without even consider what is the long-term consequences. The medical nutrition therapy, um, I don't want to talk at all about medication because that is something that we as South Africans use a lot. Um, as you know, we will use antibiotics for almost any bacterial or infection. So, I want to go further to the last part of diet, and that may reduce symptoms of the ADHD. Now, the supplementation is something that I will focus on, and then also the Fingold diet, I will just shortly mention some of the information. Quite interesting um, to deep a little bit into that, that I'm not going to do. Then also the stricted elimination diet, and then also we, we control the intake of sugar. And with that, I will also mention a little bit more about the low GI, the intermediate and the high GI foods. Then also the ketogenic diet, um, last but not least. The side effects of the medication that we experience quite a lot is weight loss, suppression of height, and then also the gastrointestinal systems, um, suppression of their appetite, a dry mouth, diarrhea, constipation, nausea, and also vomiting. And this is something that seriously need to be looked at because it is side effects of medication that's been used and now you need to change your diet to stop diarrhea or change the diet to get in some more fiber so, and water for the constipation. For the first um, diet that has been mentioned, I just want to focus more on a healthy diet. And I think all of us knows what is healthy towards non-healthy food. But some of the products that I'm going to mention, like macro and micro elements, is very good to use for a 
child with ADHD. And that is our omega-3 fatty acids. Now, as you can see, it comes in food like flaxseed or your cod liver oil, your flax seeds, not only the oil as such, your chia seeds and also fatty fish like salmon, sardines and mackerel. The main important thing that we normally stress to our clients is to prevent the intake of omega-6 as a supplement because you do get in enough if you eat your food in different types of um, seeds and nuts in your diet, even your olives, some of your oils, they contain enough of omega-6. But the omega-3 is much more important to add into the diet. A very good thing to remember also is omega-6 is pro-inflammatory. So you actually want to stay away from that and focus more on anti-inflammatory, which is your omega-3. So supplementation can be a dosage of 300 milligram, exclusively your EPA and your DHA per day. But you can initially start with approximately 600 milligrams, and that can be up to two to three months. And then you can reduce back again to 300 milligrams. Your iron, your zinc, and your magnesium is also very important to look at as to supplement it into the diet. A lot of our ADHD children has got a very low iron. So sometimes parents will wonder why there is any form of picky eating, and that is the reason of iron deficiency. So that would be something to supplement. Zinc is very good, especially with the immune system, also for supplementation. And then also magnesium. We know that the benefits of magnesium towards the muscle and the muscle stiffness and the restlessness will help quite a lot. And then also with very good sleeping patterns, even if you start um, or give it at night. Um, Omega-3 is also a good supplement to give at night, just after a meal. And sometimes there's a little bit of repeat, so they, the children don't like the fish taste in the mouth if we give it in the morning. And I am not fond of any supplementation um, when we have coffee or tea close to um, taking the supplementation. So probably at night, it would be preferable to have a meal um, without any coffee or tea after that, and then you can do the supplementation. <clears throat> the Fingal diet, I just quickly want to mention a little bit about food containing your salicylates, which is also good food, healthy food like apples and grapes, also called meat which is um, part of the processed meats, um, sausages, your vihanas, and then also artificial colorants and flavorants. So the Fingal diet is more about that, and then also to focus on the synthetic red and orange dyes that is normally consumed in cold drink and in sweets. The only foods without preservatives should be eaten. And sometimes it's difficult because in a busy lifestyle, we will go to the supermarket, buy ready-packed meals, and that causes that we will focus on food products that has preservatives, and you can't prevent the intake of that. So healthy food, I will give a definition of what we will prepare at home. We know what is the 10 favorite foods of America, and we as South Africans are just behind each and every one of you because a lot of our clients do love to take in hamburgers and chips and dagwood and pizzas. And there's a new article also that I read that showed the triple um, pizza layers that is now new with us, um, where two to three slices would normally give you 7,000 kilojoules is even now up to 20,000 um, kilojoules. Now we work with kilojoules 
um, I think the main important thing is just to remember it's almost three times more. And the problem is we will count, we will have two to three slices, but then we forget that every slice got two extra layers of the pizza dough with extra cheese toppings and fillings on that. Um, just something to say about the allergies, that there was such a good um, result on 89% that reacted to food colorings, 72% to flavorings, and then 60% to MSG, and then also the synthetic additives. And sometimes we will focus on milk and chocolates and oranges, um, and it just shows us um, the colorings and the flavorings in the food and the preservatives, that it is not as good as we think it is. This restricted elimination diet is something that I think is very important to use with a nutritionist or a dietitian close to you. And the reason for this is there's two different forms of implementing the elimination diet. The one will be like a pyramid where the base is on the ground level. So if I can show it, it would be looking something like this. So you will start with a diet where you will have quite a lot of food products to take in and see how it goes and you will start to eliminate the diet. I like the other way around. So I would go for start with narrowing your, your food items. Have a little different products, few products to use and eliminate almost everything that you know can cause a problem. And as your child is becoming better um, and experiencing less um, activities or um, hyperactivity, you can start to implement more of the food that you have already been eliminated. We do it slowly. We will go for one food product maybe every three to four days. See how the child reacts to that. If it is not a good reaction, we will keep away for it for another couple of weeks and try something else in the diet. Um, <clears throat> I think the main important thing is to look at two to three weeks for the period of elimination, um, and that would be specifically the food um, products that you know um, is a problem to your child. Um, what we normally tell our patients is tell us what is the food that they like the most. So that would be the food products that you will start to eliminate first. Um, and it's easy because if you ask a child, um, what does he nibble on? He will tell you um, chips or um, what is his takeaway food that he likes? And he will tell you he likes pizza. Or <clears throat> maybe you will ask what types of food are in the house and do you use a lot of potatoes and um, maybe bread or any other part of cereals that your child likes to eat two to three times during the day. That would be the food products to start to eliminate out of his diet or her diet first and then slowly see how it goes for the two to three weeks and try to implement that again. The main important thing with um, sugar and aspartame that we learn um, as dietitians in our practice is a lot of our moms um, change from sugar to any artificial sweetness. What I don't like is what I normally ask the parents, did you ever see in your life uh, somebody drinking Coke Light that is thin and skinny? Well, I didn't. So I normally ask my parents to go back to normal sugar intake, but to be more aware on what is in the products that they buy. So I teach my patients carbohydrates and I teach them the importance of counting the carbohydrates in the food and then we also will focus on one teaspoon of sugar will have five grams of carbohydrates. So if they will buy something like quick noodles then they will go and have a look on the back of the um, packet 
what is the amount of carbohydrates per packet? So normally the table will tell you per 100 gram and per um, serving. So we will look at the serving size and if it counts to about 75 grams of carbohydrates per quick noodles for the serving, we know that for example, um, one slice of bread is 15 grams of carbohydrates, so the 75 will count to about five slices of bread. So that would be an easy way to um, inform our patients about what is in the food that they are eating and how to take it back to, for example, a slice of bread. Because it's easier to ask a mother, do you think your child will ever sit down and have five slices of bread per meal or per sitting? And that will never happen. So, but they will easily sit down and have a packet of noodles. So that would be something to look at to make it easier for the mother to understand um, calculating the carbohydrates. The other problem with the artificial sweetness, it causes quite a high acidity in the body. So maybe not as much for children, but for adults, they do struggle with um, joint pain and inflammation. So that is something that you want to prevent as far as possible. Um, Gwen, you can move to the next slide. <clears throat> This is my favorite because this comes back to what we as dietitians do. Um, on the left side of the slide, you will see that there is a spike of a red arrow going up and then down again. This is part of the glycemic index. So what it actually say is um, you will focus on food products that you will take in consume and it will give you quick energy but in the next hour and a half we say normally about 90 minutes you will have a very quick drop in your glucose levels you will feel fainted exhausted um, tired cannot concentrate and we see that a lot with children having a breakfast for example milo pup or rice krispies and then they even add milk and sugar to the cereals in the morning. Round about half past eight, nine o'clock, the teachers just can't stand for them in the class because they are fidgeting, they can't sit still, they're talking with one another, they don't focus. <clears throat> the other slide, um, or other um, side of the slide, which is more the green, you will see that it's food products that's actually giving you sustained energy. And it's such a beautiful word because when you eat those food, it will give you energy for so much longer. So it would last far more than the 90 minutes and take you even up to about three hours. Um, you will feel longer and it will also um, end up at the end of the day that your child or even you as an adult will eat less. What is also important, and that's just a good tip to give, is that when you have low GI food, even if you add a little bit of protein to that meal, it will give you a longer lasting effect because it stays longer in the stomach. The protein is digested first, so it keeps you fuller for longer. So it's always good to add that to um, a meal. Um, I've just before um, the webinar looked at um, a picture of um, good suggestions for uh, snack meals for children. And it was such a healthy plate of food with um, three different types of fruit, but it was not all three fruits. It was just either a quarter of or a third of one of the fruits, but three different types of them. And it was colorful on the plate, like, for example, your apples, your peaches, and then also your oranges. With that, they had a little bit of hummus, or you can either add a little bit of um, cheese, small blocks of cheese, and maybe a, 
a meat that was left of um, the previous meal, like, for example, chicken or fish, and then um, also maybe a little bit of vegetables that is raw. Um, it's good to add that as a, a snack box, and um, it's something that children will love to have. It's crunchy, it's fresh, um, it's healthy, and it is also giving them sustained energy to last longer because there are protein um, with the meal. Gwen, you can continue. And I think that is part of good habits that we can add into our diet. <clears throat> um, the ketogenic diet, I think, is what is um, on this slide. Um, it is important to work with your pediatrician and your dietitian. Um, we will use it only when a pediatrician has prescribed the ketogenic diet um, and where we know that it will make a difference to the amount of seizures that the youngster experience at that moment. Thank you, Queen. And the next slide. Um, <clears throat> what I want to say about um, the ketogenic diet, it becomes with us in South Africa um, something that people will use because it is close to the banting or close to a high protein and very high fat content that they will add. I think when we struggle with children that have problems with obesity, it would not be something to think um, to start your child on because of the high intake of the fat. And we normally experience um, the knowledge of our adults is not good about the nutrition. So we will tell them that if you have one gram of carbohydrates, it will last, um, give you about 17 kilojoules. But if you have one gram of fat, it will increase to 34 to 38 kilojoules, which is quite a lot, threefold more. So energy dense, um, and then we struggle with the weight increase, and we can't manage to get the weight down at all. Thank you, Gwen. The next couple of slides, I'm going to focus on the nutrition and the pyramid that we know about good nutrition a um, long time ago, more than 20 years when I finished my studies, was carbohydrates was the basis of the pyramid. And then all the vegetables and the fruit will come and then the protein and then the milk and the cheese and last on top of the pyramid will be the fat and the sweets. It changed and I like the new um, sort of pyramid that I have on the slide for you because here we focus more on are our little ones rehydrated? I like the golden rule and everyone knows me about that. Um, I will never tell my clients to stop drinking coffee or tea or cold drink or fizzy drinks. It still gives them the opportunity to have it, but I will give them the knowledge to understand why it is not good for you if you have too much. So moderation for me is such an important word. So be rehydrated. I will tell them the golden rule, have your glass of cool drink. But before you have another glass of cool drink, have two glasses of water. And at that way, you will rehydrate your system. You can't think by adding a little bit of um, cool drink um, concentration into water, it will be okay. It's part of the fluid intake. It still stays important that your body takes in more water than coffee, tea, and cold drink. Um, also, the vitamins and minerals that we have spoken um, previously is important. And then I like how the young ones are exercising, swimming, playing around with friends, and then also focusing on that as part of their daily activity. Then the second per, um, platform of the pyramid will be the protein. And the reason for that is good healthy protein, especially animal protein, is good for a feeling of satiety. So that would be something to add with 
either your three main meals or with the smaller ones as well if you would like to add um, cheese or um, dry meat or even if it is cottage cheese um, for example as an in-between snack. I love legumes so that would also be something that I will give to our patients. The third form platform of the um, pyramid will be the carbohydrates, your starchy vegetables, your fruit. Um, I love to give that as part of um, nutrition. We focus more on healthy um, whole, weight, whole wheat products and then also your veggies. And sometimes we experience that a lot of the children don't want to eat vegetables because the only way the mom has introduced it to them was when it was cooked or baked or um, not as they would like to have it fresh and raw. So it's good to listen to your child um, and to introduce him to different varieties of taste. Um, the fourth part of the pyramid is then your um, milk and your um, fat and your sweets. That is the last part. Um, and there's always space for that. I think as human beings, it's good to say that we may, but it comes to the portion size. One of my colleagues will always say portion distortion. And I think if that would be something that you will take home, it would be good to know that we may but what is the amount that we introduce to our children as a portion. Thank you, Gwen. I also think it is very important um, to have a look at the plate. It's something to keep in mind, to take home, that you will always remember that there's not a no to a product or a food item, but it is, the question is, is it really worth it? So sometimes we are um, in craving for something sweet, but we specifically know that we would like to have an apple pie. Then we will go to our favorite restaurant and there's no apple pie and we will have a carrot cake, for example. It's not what you are craving for, so it was not worth it. If you remember that, it is such a good message to take home. If you have a look at the plate, you will see that half of the plate is actually fresh vegetables and fruits. And if it is that your children is eating cooked vegetables, wonderful. If they want raw vegetables, introduce them to the raw vegetables. But keep the plate in your head so that you will always focus on having a quarter of your plate as starch and a quarter of the plate as protein. Now I'm laughing a little bit because if we have a look at hamburgers and chips, it is almost three quarters of the plate starch. Um, I think the tomato slice on the hamburger patty will be the inner part where we say it can be fats and oils and then the meat portion will be a quarter of, of the plate size. So that will just give you a little bit of an idea um, where our focus is on a plate of food. And then the dairy on the side, um, we only, always tell our patients, be careful for yogurt. One small little tub of yogurt in South Africa contains anything between two and three teaspoons of sugar. So it's not a good form of thank goodness my child doesn't eat, let's give him three small little tins of yogurt, at least he had something. But then you must remember it's before bedtime and it's anything between 15 and 18 teaspoons of sugar your child has consumed just before bedtime. Thank you, Gwen. I think that is something to take home because we will start the day off very good and then at night um, the children want to eat sugary stuff because they didn't have enough carbohydrates during the day. Now, carbohydrates is one of the three macro elements as protein and fat we will come just now. The main important thing here is to have carbohydrates in your meal planned as part of your plate, a quarter of the size, very important to make sure it's low GI. That is also part of high fiber food that we take in. And we know that with fiber, 
we will always want to add more water because it helps with the absorption, it helps also with the bowel movements and prevent our little ones from constipation. There's a few um, examples that I have given on um, carbohydrates, what is better choices to have. Um, something that I want to explain, um, if your child likes Milo Pup, um, it's not a problem, but maybe give a little bit less Milo Pup in the morning with milk, try to stay away from the sugar that's been added to it, and maybe have one slice of low GI bread with an added scrambled egg or a egg. Um, uh, that you can boil and give that as breakfast. Then you have the Milo cereal, which is a high GI, a little bit of milk, which is low GI, your low GI slice of bread, which is low GI, and you add a little bit of protein to that meal specifically to keep your child fuller for longer and a better concentration thereafter. Thank you, Gwen. The next slide, we will continue with proteins. Um, I think what is very important there is your animal proteins, but that we never forget about the plant proteins. Plant proteins to add with meals are such a good form of fiber and also a feeling of fullness. What I normally ask my clients um, will be if the mother is um, giving sauces, um, for example, with chicken on a sandwich to school, I will ask the mom to make half mayonnaise with half plain yogurt, for example, and then you take the white kidney beans and you can puree them and add that with the plain yogurt and with the mayonnaise. So the child, and you start slowly with that, because if you do it right from the beginning, half, half, your child most probably won't eat the chicken mayo bread because it doesn't taste the same. So changes can be done in a period of time of three months to six months. At least you know as a mother that you are implementing better food habits at home. Why I'm not fond of processed meat is because of the high fat content and also the high salt content. And the little ones, especially when they are in the age of three, four, five, and we give them processed meat, it's quite a problem to the kidneys, and they don't drink enough water. So we will give them fizzy drinks or um, cool drink or juice, because we think juice are healthy. But we struggle in South Africa with the contents um, of juice and the amount of juice that the little ones are drinking. So again, Try to implement the golden rule by giving a glass of juice, dilute that with double the amount of water, but that would be the amount that your child will have. So start with a third of the juice in a glass and two thirds of water. And then slowly you actually implement a better lifestyle, eating style for your children. Eggs are also very good sources of protein. And it's a very nice way of eating it for maybe lunch boxes or even for lunch or even for breakfast. Thank you, Gwen. The last slide then on the three macro elements will be fats. I still want to add fat into the diet because there is a lot of fat soluble vitamins that need to be absorbed. And this is one of the main reasons that I will always add some sort of fat into a meal. So it can either be a form of oil or um, it can be avocados or even olives um, and nuts. Um, normally, I would go and ask not to have a whole snack of eating only nuts, but be careful and maybe have a fruit. And about 20 minutes later, you can top up the fruit with the nuts, which is a good example of an uh, apple that is a low GI fruit or any other acidious fruits that want to be taken. And then about 20, 30 minutes later to top that meal up with protein and fat. 
because you know that that will give your child a little bit of fullness, satiety feeling, feeling full for longer. And that is what we would like to have by adding the nuts then after having the fruit. Um, I think very important with the oils, never to go to heating it as such because of the high temperatures, the changing of the molecules of the fats, and then also um, the trans fatty acids that we do um, get quite a high content in our dried chips. Um, it's so easy to give our children dried chips um, because it's um, comfortable, it is a quick meal, it's um, something to keep them quiet for until the food is ready. But try to keep um, that as a special treat. So when you do some sort of activity, um, have it as a treat after the whole family went out for cycling or um, activity on a Saturday. Um, thank you, Gwen. The next slide. I think to concentrate on healthy meals makes it easier to remember that we stay human beings, that we do portion control, and that we will eat only when it is worth it. The next slide that's on the screen is more about um, better alternatives. And um, it's just something to make sure that if we have something like a pastry that we want to give our children, rather focus on making your own at home than buying with all the preservatives that's in it. And something like pizzas, um, making fun on a weekend with your children by making your own pizza base, adding your own toppings, and put that in the oven and everyone is waiting for the pizza. And while we are waiting, everyone is becoming hungrier. So have a salad that is ready and prepared and everyone can help to make it. And have the salad before the pizza is ready. That is just an example of being human being and be a mom in a house where everyone is going to ask, why can my friend have pizza and we can't. So it's just an example by making it yourself. Even if you do brise, um, make your own patties, bry your own patties, and make your own hamburgers at home. It's not necessary that we always need to focus on chips. You can go for um, raw sweet potatoes, and you slice them as the same slices as we have chips, but you can eat it raw, which is as part of raw vegetables that they can have with that meal and you can make a nice salad with that. Um, I love to focus on breakfast. So we will normally ask our clients if the children is not eating enough for breakfast that we will focus on making a fruit um, shake for them and then we will add um, cereals like Pronitro or even Future Life into the shake to give it a little bit more of carbohydrates and also vitamins and minerals. Thank you, Gwen. I'm not fond of a microwave, and I think it's something that we use a lot because it's convenient, it's quick. But if you can have um, maybe some more family time, focus on what you can do at home in your kitchen with your family and make a very nice event of that. Thank you for your time. It was wonderful talking to you. And um, I give over to Gwen now. Thank you, Tristy. And again, thank you everyone for attending today. If you do have additional questions, I see that some people have some comments, but if you do have additional questions, please continue to type them in as we finalize the webinar. Uh, Natalie asks, is future life okay? And I'm not really certain which part she was referring to there. Yes, future life um, is the cereal that we can use. Um, we would rather give it as a drinking pup in the morning because a lot of our mothers are in haste. There is not enough time for breakfast. The children is not morning children and they don't want to eat something. So then we will give future life with added milk 
if you know that your child has got a picky eater problem, maybe it would also be good to add some sort of nutrition powder to that that is um, ideal for children. And that can be a very good example of a nutritionist shake to give. Otherwise, you can use Future Life as a cereal in the morning by adding water or milk to that. And you can make also um, very nice scones and muffins um, by taking the fluid out of the recipe and just by adding the Future of Life in a fluid form. And you can add that to your um, dough and you make a nice um, scone um, of that. Nice. And Janet uh, mentioned perhaps some safe alternatives to white sugar, such as co coconut sugar. Do you have any comment on that? Yes. Um, as dietitians, we all know where we are standing with um, the Banting diet and Prof Noakes. Um, it is a wonderful privilege just to mention um, coconut sugar, if you want to go for sugar and the taste of sugar, um, nothing is going to replace it. So again, don't go for a replacement and having three, four teaspoons of it and you don't get the same feeling of what you would if you go for white sugar. I don't have a problem specifically. Um, we are addressing as our patient's needs are. But personally, as a dietitian, I will never prescribe any form of coconut um, to my patients. Thank you. And Rob also mentioned that it uh, sometimes gets confusing, that carbohydrates sometimes can get confusing when it comes to ADHD. And he asks about... Yes. Um, Rob, Go ahead. Um, Rob, you are absolutely right. It becomes confusing. I think it's because um, a lot of people go around with the Atkins diet where you want to prevent the intake of carbohydrates, and that is a very good outcome for ADHD children. But again, I'll say if you have a look at the plate and you focus on a quarter of the size of the plate for low GI carbohydrates, I don't think it is a problem adding things like brown rice, lentils, legumes, um, low GI, um, like sweet potatoes, cold potatoes at all to a plate of food for your children. Um, having the wrong refined um, form of carbohydrates like pastries and cookies, um, I will be a little bit careful because of the hyperactivity of the children. Thank you. And uh, let's see, Rob also asked and posted a comment about condensed veggies powder form. Yes, um, for nutritionists, I would rather go for fresh. Um, and the reason for that is our soils in South Africa is already quite low on vitamins and minerals. So when you um, put your vegetable under extreme heat and a lot of fluid with that, your water-soluble vitamins are in the water that you are throwing away and the high temperatures also damage quite a lot of um, the vitamins and the minerals. So the freezing of your product will also damage quite a lot of the vitamins and minerals. So at the end, you are left left with um, vegetables that you think is good, at least you're adding vegetables to the supper, but very low on vitamins and minerals. So I would prefer the raw and um, fresh, and then if not, maybe some day, um, some of the days, you can add the powder or the condensed form of the fruits and the vegetables. Marlies comments that an example of a healthy breakfast snack box for school lunch, uh, school and lunch that can be packed for the day. Okay. Um, it's making me excited, Gwen, because I think um, if it is okay with you, we can plan a next session. Um, my colleague is doing lunch boxes 
for our children in Bloemfontein. And um, she is focusing on very good examples of how a lunchbox can look like. Um, I think the main thing that we will remember again is the plate form. So if you pack a lunch box or school box for your child, is to make sure that half of the box will be fresh fruit and vegetables. Um, a quarter of the box can be proteins and a quarter of the box can be carbohydrates. So just to give an example, um, in your imagination, have your um, lunch box, um, have slices of, um, say for example, oranges, that you will put in tin foil close together um, so that the fluid, um, the juice of the orange is not all over the lunchbox. You can add, um, also add some strawberry slices in a small little container in the one part of the lunchbox. Then that will fill up about half of your, your plate or your lunchbox. You can either add a little bit of green peas, which is raw, the small little millies and few slices of carrots. And then the rest of your lunchbox can be small little meatballs that you make yourself at home, which will be a quarter of the lunchbox size for protein. And the other quarter of the lunchbox, you can make a very nice cheese scone that you can add into your lunchbox. We always stress the importance of water and the cold drink. Because your child is going to school, everyone is drinking cool drink, but you want to learn in a good habit. So you will go for 100, 150 mils of cool drink, and then almost the 300 to 500 mils of water. Excellent. And that would be a good follow-up session, back to school special about school lunches. Albert has two questions. The first is your opinion of coconut oil. Coconut oil will be exactly the same as I've said previously, will not use it at all and will not prescribe it as a dietitian for any of my patients. And his second question uh, to add on to the issue about sugar, stevia and monk fruit are deemed as natural sweetness that is safe for our learners with ADHD. What is your opinion? Yes, um, by all means, it can be used um, and it can be safe and it can be a good um, source of sweetness that can fulfill a great part in your child's diet if you make your own cookies or sweeties at home for them. Um, in South Africa, we've got a very nice cookie sweet that we call rice crispy cookies so you will take your marshmallows and your rice krispies and you with the recipe makes a very nice cookie with that um, at the end as a dietitian and that is what i am saying not what all of us is saying i would rather go for the taste of something like the real mccoy with a little bit of sugar in it, take the recipe, change the sugar content from three cups to one cup and make that as um, a recipe and something nice to eat for in between snacks for my children, than to go and add, take the sugar away and add the sweetness to um, the recipe. Very good. Thank you so much. And thanks to Tristy for being our guest speaker today. We really appreciate your knowledge and all of the information you gave us today. Like I said previously, we are recording this event, so you will all receive the recording. I know some of you came in a little bit late, uh, so you'll have the recording if you missed any portions of this webinar or if you would like to share it with others. We'll make certain you get that. A couple of things I want to mention upcoming. Of course, Play Attention always has free professional consultations available. If you would like a free assessment of your particular needs or your child's particular needs, or if you're a professional, your client's particular needs, that is available on our website. You can go to the free consult section. Also, we have some upcoming webinars that I want to discuss. 
On June 28th, which is tomorrow, we are going to have a special webinar uh, introducing our new Play Attention BioLink Attention Training Centers. So if you want to learn more about that as a professional option, be certain to go to our website and click on the webinars tab to register for that event. Again, that is tomorrow at noon Eastern time. On July 10th, we'll be talking about six steps to take this summer to improve executive function. So if you need a little bit more about play attention and how the play attention system works and how play attention is specifically designed to improve executive function and self-regulation, that is a great introductory webinar for you to attend on July 10th. Also, on July 17th, we're also going to have a guest host, and he will be discussing mindfulness techniques and ADHD. That one is not yet posted on our website, but should be within the next week. If you have any additional questions, please do feel free to keep typing them. I'll make certain that all of your questions get to Tristy. If you have more questions once you receive our email, please do type them in and we'll be happy to address your questions specifically. Thank you everyone for attending today. Thank you, Tristy. And we look forward to speaking all of you very soon. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.